So today is Nayeli's autism evaluation. We're gonna be here for three to four and a half hours. Nayeli, can you tell your babies to get up? Get up! Basically, they just watch Nayeli play with a lot of things. You ready to go play with your baby? Yeah. Okay, let's go. But I want to go over all the signs, symptoms, things I noticed, why I got her tested. Most children with autism, they do not respond back to their name. She responds back to her name. Nayeli. I keep stopping like my conversations and showing y'all different examples because I want y'all to see like how she acts. Nayeli, who is that? Right there. Who is that? Mama. That's your Mina? Mama. <laughs> That's my mom. Tell the camera, say bye. Bye. Bye, bye mommy. You know what's best for your child and your family, so stand on it. One more thing, and we're about to get to the results and then how that went and how going there. They came back to me and they told me. What's up YouTube family? I have to rush this intro because I'm about to be late but I wanted to summarize what was going on since I never talked about this topic on my channel. So today is Nayeli's autism evaluation. The reason why I haven't spoke on this on my channel previously simply because I've been waiting for this day for years, like two years. So I didn't want to bring the topic to you guys attention then y'all don't hear any update from me for another six months eight months like, i'd rather just wait and just know every single thing so when i come to you guys about it i can come to you guys with the whole entire video so that is the plan for today evaluation starts at 10 but it's 9 22 we just pulled up we're gonna be here for three to four and a half hours and i just wanted to like inform and just kind of explain my experience and everything that i went through even after this video i will get her evaluation results today nine times out of ten so i will come back with the results everything they said the signs and symptoms why i was concerned i just want to help another mom that's out there because when your child is showing very mild symptoms of autism it's very hard to you know talk with others or find videos that relates to your situation simply because the case isn't as severe i'm gonna talk so much more about this at the like mid slash end of the video stay tuned y'all can you tell your babies to get up get up get Doctors are on a like 30 minute break to where she's going to discuss with another doctor. Um, possibly they're going to come back with the results. I'm not sure yet. It is 1130 so we've been here for two hours um, already. Mama. Um, yes. Look, wash your hands. I don't know if I'm supposed to be recording. That's why I haven't recorded much in the room. It is cameras where other doctors are watching the evaluation or like another doctor's watching the evaluation while another one is actually in there doing it. So I don't want to just pull out my camera and start talking and they're watching me on the cameras like, what's she doing? So I was actually glad Nayeli had to go to the bathroom. Basically, they just watch Nayeli play with a lot of things. Um, a lot of toys like um, the video that I've clipped that I'm gonna insert or I probably have already inserted where her playing with the dolls is typically Mama. like what she was doing Mama. they did like a happy Mama. birthday hands yeah you washed your hands like she was like okay the doll's sleeping now wake up it's her birthday they put like play-doh and some perfume candles Nayeli blowed the candles out they gave her like different types of toys blocks animals a little talking toy and just to see how she interacted um, with it, I spilled out some paperwork and forms. So I will come back and update you guys with everything that's going on. Um, because right now, we're just waiting on the doctors to come back in the room. Yeah, I will update you guys and um, let y'all know everything that's going on. What's up, baby? You ready to go play with your baby? Yeah. Yes? Okay, let's go. Mama. Hmm? Thank you. Mama, baby. What's her name? Baby? Baby. Yeah? Baby. You want this? Yeah. You didn't even look at it. You want this? 
No. This? Uh-uh. You want candy? Yes. Nayeli. <laughs> okay. So, it's um some hours later. We're back from the evaluation. But I want to go over all the signs, symptoms, things I noticed, why I got her tested first so that you guys are able to understand why the results came back the way they did. I want to, you know, advocate for other moms because I was that mom that everyone was like, I don't see it or girl, I think you tripping or oh, I see this, but I don't see that. So I'm like, you know what? Somebody may be going through the exact same thing that I'm going through or a child had the exact same symptoms. You never know who you can be helping. So this is my note that I have out of everything that I've typed on here. Why I decided to get Nayeli evaluated for autism slash signs that I noticed. So at about one, I noticed Nayeli was not... Um, meeting her speech milestones developmental wise she was she was sitting up walking she wasn't doing much babbling at one one and a half where she should be so speech is the main and first thing nayeli can we be quiet um y'all this girl got an attitude problem <laughs> let me tell y'all just because y'all will sit up let, let me just finish that being first the speech delay i noticed it at one i noticed it at two i noticed it at three so that was like the number one indicator and yes it is true that kids do talk at certain times her vocabulary has increased drastically like it's so much that i had to tell you guys in this video and i'm just trying not to just get everywhere and stick with one thing so we're gonna talk about more about speech and her improvements and how those happen so let's move on to the second thing that um made me want to get her tested she had a very high sense sensitivity to sound and light during the potty training process i noticed the, the sound of the toilet she was consistently covering up her ears or if people would sing Happy or be too loud she was covering to up her ears you. if i was on the phone she was consistently covering up her ears she is not covering up her ears no more but like i said we're gonna speak on the things that was happening i noticed this happening around two and after um, another thing would be light sensitivity i don't know exactly if it you guys would call that light like if she's watching her ipad maybe if you guys will be paying attention to her in this video my mom about to be pulling up and i'm gonna let her go in the, my, in the house with my mom so because i don't want her talking and interrupting me too much during the video but like if she what well, is watching her ipad she may do like this and watch through her fingers or like put her arm up like the ipad maybe right here she'll put her arm up but still be watching and i was like hmm that's quite that's not quite normal i started noticing her doing that when the ears ears was a problem so i was like okay those are really the main indicators of of autism that I noticed so even with those little three little signs symptoms or whatever I was like okay something isn't right you guys are not familiar with autism I listed out some of the obvious things obvious signs and symptoms of autism so that I can inform you guys because this is what she's not doing and when the signs are not obvious and boom out there you know people always think it could be something else and here are some of the obvious signs of autism that Nayeli was not doing most children with autism they do not respond back to their name she responds back to her name I call her 10 15 different names Nene, Nayeli, Tanga Booty, Naomi, Yomi, Tank Tank, Booty, Tanka. She responds back to all of those. Nayeli. Hi. As you can see, she just looked up. Number two, no pickiness to foods. When I tell you my baby eat everything, that's the compliment that I get the most. Like, she's such a great eater, mom. How do you get her to eat, you know, all these different fruits, all these different vegetables? All of a sudden, she has this obsession with McDonald's now, so she wants chicken nuggets all the time. And she calls McDonald's apples and fries. So all of a sudden, she wants apples and fries. Let's see if she wants it right now. Nayeli, you want apples and fries? Yeah. She always wants that. She eats every single thing. She doesn't matter what texture. She wears any type of textured clothes. That's another thing. Kids with autism, they are specific to certain textures. They don't like certain textures of clothes, certain textures of foods. This girl eats mashed potatoes, bananas, hard, soft. She eating it. Boom. That's number two. She engages a lot in imaginary play, which y'all saw in the video. Um, imaginary play is just like her like 
playing with baby dolls, her playing with pretend food, she's able to take a spoon, a fake spoon, a real spoon, and put it to her mouth. Like, she's not putting it up under her arm, you know? Like, she knows that obvious play. Like, she knows how to do that. That's a number three sign in autism that she does not do. Number four, she plays very well with other kids. This is, like, a main indicator where moms be like, hey, yep, you know, my child won't play with other kids. They're in the corner by herself. She's a complete opposite. She plays well with other kids. She is in daycare. We're going to talk more about that. Um, she played with my nieces. She plays with them just fine. That's her favorite place to go, literally. Nayeli, you want to go to Chi House? Yes. Yes. She was potty trained at three. She would have been potty trained sooner. I put her potty training delay on me because I simply did not want to do it. Like, I'm never home. That's going to take so much time and consistency. But, of course, I was like, okay, you're three now. You're going to do it. She caught on like that. Three days. Um, This girl doesn't wear pull-ups at night. She's never peed on herself at daycare. I'm going to explain to y'all I put why I put her in daycare last month as well. But fully potty trained, a lot of children with autism have very hard times getting potty trained or teaching them or catching on to new things but she did that boom number seven very very independent i can i said you know what the food thing was a compliment no this is actually my most you know parental mama compliment i take that yes let me tell y'all these doctors was like mom you own it but let's, let, let's stay here let's stay here i don't want to get everywhere very independent knows how to brush her own teeth of course i go after and help her she wants to bathe herself she want to do her own hair she want to put her she want to do makeup she don't want you to help her do anything at all um most children who are severely autistic they um like a lot of help they are independent they don't know how to do everything let me tell you this girl likes to cook she knows how to make her own cereal pours her own milk like she knows how to do those type of stuff so that's another thing where people are kind of look at me like eh, most children with autism are not independent nayeli is very independent so there we go she advanced out of speech therapy at one when i started making um concerns complaints about her speech to her pediatrician they asked me that hey we're gonna put her in speech therapy at this time she was almost two when she started they told me that hey she's gonna do six months um in speech therapy nayeli only ended up doing four months they said she advanced out and um she could do everything that you know they could teach her so she was done and in my heart i'm like this don't sound right they're like oh yeah she could sing the whole wheels on the bus song yeah she can sing but she's not speaking in sentences um she had no physical delays i'm not saying you know all children do but something that they asked me what do you need help what do you want me to do what, what do you want to watch yeah you don't want to watch this you want to watch monkey Yes. Okay, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you got to get in your seat, okay? Like I said, she walked at an appropriate time. They call like walking too late by 15 months. If you're not walking by 15 months, they'd be like, okay, like something's going on. So she walked at an appropriate time. She crawled at seven months. She had great, like fine gross motor skills. She didn't really have no problems that because these are questions they ask me with running up and down stairs none of those type of problems so um this was an indicator to some professionals nayeli mama yes yeah, yeah. okay it's raining i need you to be quiet okay for mommy she comprehends everything and she follows directions when she wants to i could tell her hey i want you to go get on the potty and once you finish going get on the potty go put your clothes in your dirty clothes and then come back so you can take a bath she's able to comprehend every single thing i just said do everything i just said and you know do that most children with autism they have a hard time focusing on doing one thing or switching from task to task she didn't have she doesn't have a problem with that she's able to understand everything now nayeli's also very manipulative so if she doesn't want to do it we're gonna talk the doctor spoke on that today but if she doesn't want to do it she's not gonna do it but like i keep trying to like give y'all real world examples of like me telling her and asking her to do stuff so that you guys can understand where i'm coming from regarding her comprehension speaking and skills like that so where you know and i i could understand why professionals and other people were not um like boom yeah it's autism clear day. but y'all know how kids be like you be like oh my kids know this my my daughter like, y'all i know it's off topic she know her abc she could count to 10 she know a lot of different colors so yeah let's see nayeli get in your seat mama hmm? 
this is where the manipulation comes in um i'm not trying to be funny like they even said like she's very manipulative y'all saw she did not want to get in her car seat so she said mama hug wanted to hug me i didn't reach my arms out so she gave me a kiss because she's like okay if i do that that means i don't have to get in my seat but as you guys can see she still went there and um got in her seat what's wrong it's i don't baby talk her like do you hear me like come meet your go meet anybody like of course all moms we do that like you know when we playing with our babies and stuff but like just learning and comprehension no i talk to her like she's a freaking 23 year old girl because this girl is grown Mom. You want to watch nine? Mm -mm. Who comes what comes at the nine? Her, I'm going to tell her to Ten. do something and then yeah. you guys can observe how Good she's job. able to comprehend yeah. what I'm telling her to do. And she will do it. Hopefully she's not too distracted by her tablet at the time. But most of the time she will do it. Girl, y'all mean I need to come get you so I can focus on my video. What you want? Monkey. That? That. Okay, now we're going to talk about the things I did to help overall because I personally feel like I worked with Nayeli a lot at home to where she could have been showing these signs and symptoms, the previous ones that I was just talking about, but she didn't show them simply because we practice it every single freaking day. Um, but I'm no expert. I'm just saying personally because this is something that I've been challenging and trying to figure out for two years. Number one, which is the most recent decision was I. I put her in a school slash daycare. So when I put, I decided to put Nayeli in daycare because she needed social interaction to be around other kids. I am a stay at home, but working mom. She's been with me my whole life. I don't work a nine to five. Y'all social media is my job. So she gets to, she's been with me. Like she's not around kids. She's not exposed to a lot of social interaction and social behavior. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put you in a daycare so that you can be around these other kids and see what these other kids are doing. My my mom is pulling up i keep stopping like my conversations and showing y'all different examples because i want y'all to see um like how she acts like just live on set on video nayeli who is that Dad. Mama. right there who is that Hello. Mama. that's your mina <laughs> That's my mom. She calls my mom me Nana, Mina. She go in between both. You going with your Mina? Nana. Tell the camera, say bye. Bye. Go with my Mina. Mommy. Bye bye, mommy. Bye bye, mommy. <laughs> uh oh, look. Go. You need some shoes. We gonna talk about that like with Nayeli's hearing. Is she hearing properly so that she's able to speak properly? And once we got that solved and I realized, okay, she is hearing properly. I'm like, look, I don't want to put her in daycare. I don't want to put her in any preschool because I don't trust these people. And my daughter cannot physically tell me, mommy, somebody's hurt me. Somebody did something to me. So, um... But I was like, you know what? You need to be around these other kids. Because if you're exposed to these, you know, if you get the opportunity to act accordingly and to be around other kids and to, you know, be busy. She loves being busy. She loves doing stuff. She, did, she, didn't have, she doesn't have any problems. I'm you sorry. I'm this? everywhere. I, no. I don't want to forget this. No. Okay. She doesn't have any problems. Which like one? Going to the grocery store, going out, you try being this around one? people. She doesn't have a problem with that because yes. that's another okay. major indicator of autism. She does not have um, any problems with that. This girl loves being busy. Look, me, I'm a homebody. I want to be in the bed. I can sit there and watch crime shows all day for freaking hours. Her, on the other hand, oh, no, boo. She don't, she, my girl wants to be outside. Hold on. She's coming back. You're welcome. I'm coming. I got to do a video. Overall, Nayeli has improved so much. She gets around other family members and they're like, wow, I see a difference with her patients. Like, you know, if they were feeding, my, my mom was trying to feed my nieces, my sister was trying to feed everybody. Nayeli's like, food, food, tapping her leg, eat, eat, 
food she waits patiently speaking oh my goodness i noticed a difference within the first week with her speech saying so many new things um i also talked to her daycare providers when i signed her up like look she's not here because she need a babysitter i work from home this is cost a lot of money she's not i'm spending money for her to come here she's not here for somebody to watch her she's here to learn and for me to see how she's interacting with these behaviors I expressed that to the teacher and the directors so that we had an understanding on why she was here and that I just really wanted them to be paying attention and focusing on her learning rather than, you know, I don't want to say, oh, just focus directly on my child, but just to, so that they can understand like, hey, it's not playtime here. Or you're not here just because you need a babysitter. You're here to learn. And they were very understanding of that. They kept me updated. They update me every time. Like, girl, like they told me, girl, I don't see his autism. And, or, girl, look at what Nayeli did today. Or she got me wrapping purple tape around her nails because she said she wanted purple nails. So when I picked my baby up from daycare, she had purple tape around her fingernails. Um... And just she plays so well with the kids. She's talking so much. She's not talking much to the teachers, but she's talking to the kids. Like, you know, just improvement. So I definitely, if you see any problems with your child socially or even with their speech, autistic or not, and they're not in daycare, I definitely would recommend you enrolling them into a daycare or a school. Trust me, I did swim lessons. I did gymnastics. She needed something consistent every day where she was around other kids. And daycare, unfortunately, is the only option because everything else, I had to be there with her. She needs to be away from me and to actually, you know, get herself, gain confidence in herself, gain confidence in speech sorry y'all the video got a little too long but she needed to gain confidence in speaking and doing all that and when i tell you 10 out of 10 definitely would recommend uh, it's always like i'm never putting my child in no daycare but when you have a child who is showing delays and di disabilities in certain areas i was like hey i feel like this is gonna work her pediatrician said i feel like we should try this and it's worked no hate on it 10 out of 10 y'all the second thing i did to help is um I allowed her to open up and go to more people. I'm not very trusting of people with my children, with my child. I'm to my children. I'm not very opening of people with my um, child. I was like, no, I don't want her to spend a night nowhere. She started spending a night with her dad more often because when she was one, I think she had only spent a night once or twice. So then I started letting her spend a night with her dad more often. And y'all, it's so hard. It's so trusting. Trust me, mom's DM me all the time. Like, my baby never spent a night with nowhere. How do you do it? How do you do it? It was so difficult for me. Um, I was letting her start spend a night with my sister she spent a night with my mom a few times and that's pretty much it but kids act different around different people so like you have to give children that opportunity for them to show these skills if you want them and then i notice like goes to my sister house oh she doesn't play with toys at home but goes to my sister house oh and she only wants to play with toys so it's like i had to open up and just let go and give her the opportunity to express herself number three overall just working wow. with her at Good home job. like me and nayeli we did that? we do a lot of flashcards we did a Juice. lot of flashcards it's actually Good one job. of my favorite activities to do i'm constantly just when i say working with her on the everyday i mean like i could be driving in the car and i'm like hey what's that and she's like bird um i'm like hey what's that Broccoli. house Good job. hey whose Get house is this mina Get house on, tt house when, when I say you're learning and testing her brain, I learn and I'm like testing her brain all the time. Like we're in the grocery store every single aisle. What's this? This, 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 this. Cereal, fruit, strawberries, clothes, shoes. I tested her brain every day because I just knew that. I knew like I had to work with my child at home because I knew something was going on and with being on the waiting list for two years or hearing oh she advanced out of speech therapy me as a parent I knew something else was going on so I had to make sure that I was doing all I could do at home so that my daughter could improve improve as much as possible I always put her in activities so when I say like six months old she was at places three months old she was out of town not three three months old it was still cold but like by april she was five months she took her first trip to florida 
I always let her be exposed to different things. Even if I had to be there, like just getting her outside, letting her play, letting her explore the world. Um, also, I just keep on thinking off top things off the top of my head. She doesn't have like a sensory to water. Some kids are like love to play in water, play in toilets that do have autism. But this girl loves the water park. She loves the pool. She loves swimming. So like summer is like the best time for us because she's so active. Oh my goodness, this girl loves like just all the fun beach to some vacation she loves all that stuff and i tell y'all this girl when she get older she's a teenager this girl gonna be outside i'm gonna be calling her phone like girl you got to come back home because this girl likes to be outside so yeah i never um I never limited her to her options. I never was like, oh, she's too small. She's too young. She doesn't need to do this. Or she's too small for that. I always let her, um, you know, be open. So the only problem we had with that is during swim lessons, um, she didn't want to go to the instructor, be instructor because she does she didn't like strangers does not like strangers to this day once again daycare is helping that because she's around people you know she doesn't know every day what well, she's gaining to she's she's getting to know them and she's trusting to know them now so i feel like she would do good with swim lessons now but three four months ago oh that was a no the fourth thing i did was put her in speech like i said at one she was almost two she did go to speech therapy and they just taught her very simple things i don't feel like it helped much um she learned more sign language that's really the only thing i could say she learned from there it was 30 minute sessions twice a week. I don't really feel like it helped much, but she will be going back to speech again. So yeah, next topic. Let me speak on the waiting list. So I put Nayeli on the waiting list at one. Her appointment wasn't until she was three. Sometimes you're gonna call around and these places are gonna say two hour, I mean two year, three year, four year, 18 month waiting list. Definitely get get an in-person visit because they have places to where you can go um online and do it but i just don't feel like that's sufficient is enough because they're just judging your child and watching your child through a screen versus in person where they're actually talking and sitting there with their child so i definitely would say hop on a waiting list and try to find any programs or anything that you can do to help you know help so that they have to speed it up or it may be like I know they told me once before oh it's a baby's can't wait when I took her to the ENT when I wanted to make sure that she had no problems with her ears I'm like oh I never heard of that I never looked it up because her appointment was had got scheduled the next day for the actual in-person visit but I'm assuming that program is like for people who have waiting lists to where it would either speed them up or they would bring them in you know quickly after everyone around me telling me nothing's wrong kids talk late she's not autistic all kids move at different places she'll talk when she gets ready to um all that stuff that's what i heard from 95 percent of the people who i express my concerns to my um best friend she she's a daycare teacher she teach she has autistic two and three year olds in her classroom and she's like girl no i don't see it my other best friend she's a second grade teacher she teaches aut autistic children and she's like no i don't see it her doctor we're gonna do it mom because um you know you know your child more than anyone else but i don't see it my mom everyone around me was like i don't see it now my sister i would say certain things like if i catch her doing something i'd be like hey look look this is what i'm talking about my sister would be like okay but she was more so still on the no i don't see it side versus me i was like on the yeah and even if not even if no something else is going on because her doctor was like maybe she just has a sensory processing disorder or possibly just a personality disorder and this is just her personality or it could be autism i can't say that's very frustrating because i have professionals around me or like this woman or the daycare teacher she's like oh i've been teaching for 20 years i don't see it or another teacher who i spoke with and she's a doctor now and she's like i don't see it that can become very frustrating but i just feel like always advocate for your children and just you as a parent if you're with your child every day i'm pretty sure you know what's best you know what's right you know you know the you know what's really going on and just me i'm not trying to sound like a genius or nothing but nine times out of ten when something is going on with my child 
I know what's wrong. I just take her to the doctor to get a diagnosis or to get medication. Like, Nayeli had an allergic reaction two or three days ago. I'm literally telling them, like, hey, this is what it is. I already know this is what it is. I just need y'all to give her the stuff that she needs. So, it's like, that's just all. That's the type of mom I am. I also have the time to some moms have to work and they don't have that 24 hours out of day to be able to pay attention to their child 24 hours out of day to notice and pick up on little things so it's like i've also had the time to sit there and um do that as well i know some kids who are not autistic they didn't speak until they were five i know this woman she said all her kids were evaluated nothing was wrong with her son he just didn't speak until he was seven like I, trust me so believe your gut if you don't feel like it's autism don't think don't you know get them tested but don't be standing on oh, everybody else said it's awesome so it's autism you know what's best for your child and your family so stand on it now i'm going to talk about the effects that you know me going through all of this stuff has had on me has had on me as a parent i do suffer from anxiety and some depression but um so some of this stuff could have something to do with my anxiety but just because you know it could be another mom that's going through this i'm not gonna just belittle it out like oh no this wasn't going on constant research i would it would be four o'clock in the morning i'm halfway asleep i would jump up out my sleep like signs of autism this is this this is this, this is uh, uh, signs of sensory processing disorder constant research sending my sister videos sending trying to reach out to other moms that have children with autism just trying to figure out what was going on to where it was stressing me. I wasn't sleeping um, at night. I wasn't sleeping adequately. Like, I just wanted to know an answer. The only effect that I have now was difference of diagnosis, having a diagnosis or have not having a diagnosis. Either way, I was going to have this doubt was worrying about her future. I feel like a lot of parents, another off topic, but it's on my mind. So I'm going to say this and then go on to what I was saying. A lot of children with disabilities they have parents who are in denial i never was the type of parent to be in denial about anything that comes to my kid i know my child so if it sounds like something she'll do i'm not gonna be like oh that's not my princess my princess will never do nothing like that nope that sounds like something she would do but you know a lot of parents have in denial especially with disabilities or disorders and stuff like that simply because they don't want to accept it like you know i never had that problem I, I was always i'm always the type of parent if anything is going on tell me like even with nayeli and her future like you got a boyfriend i'd rather you tell me than hide it from me or you did something bad tell me so that we can make up a solution not hey i'm never i can't tell my mom i want you to be like hey no i gotta tell my mom because we gotta get to it so acceptance is something i feel like you have to you know do within yourself and you can't be against it i said that to say this is what i meant by like worrying about her future um, whether it came back that she had autism or not i knew that something was going on with my daughter like regardless of what it is if it's a personality disorder if it's a anxiety if it's social anxiety if it's autism this is going to affect her so i the only no negative downfall of thinking i had was I don't want people to bully my daughter based off whatever condition she may have. You know, you, they're going to bully you regardless. Like, kids are mean. Kids are cruel. You're going to get bullied regardless. If you're pretty, you're not so pretty. You're going to get bullied regardless. So, but the difference is when you're getting bullied based off something, you know, like a disorder or a disability. That's the only fear that I ever had or, like, downfall to where, like, I actually cried about it. Like, when they give me results, I didn't cry um or nothing like that i was like okay um so that was the downfall that i had just like not even that i saw this girl like i was like i didn't know up one night like i said doing research and she was like um life as a 22 year old autistic girl and she was just talking about like i'm like she's nothing's wrong with her y'all and this i know i keep getting everywhere but like albert einstein albert einstein was suspected to be half autism and he's a freaking genius the dude who made tesla suspected to be on the autism spectrum disorder like 
it's not a mental retardation. And even if it was, that's your child. You have to accept your child for who they are anyway. I hope so. Back to what I was saying. It's like in the video, the girl was basically like, it's so hard because I could be having a sensory issue kick in and I'm out with my friends. We party and then the car's too loud. And then they're looking at me crazy because I may start spacing out and stuff when like I'm not normal. Like, I'm normal. I, I appear normal to other people, but I'm really not normal. Like, I, she's like, I live by myself. I have a boyfriend. I do this. I have sex. I do all this normal stuff. But here are the little things. And she's like, so when I do my, like, autism kicks in. I can't really explain it how she was explaining it. You know, here's where, you know, it gets very irritating because not everybody are, is accepting or be like, girl, it don't look like it. And autism don't have a look. Y'all, let me tell y'all that. Like, autism does not have a look. You cannot look at... Like, you can look at a child and be like, yeah, that child has Down syndrome. You cannot look at a child and be like, oh, that child has autism. It's not a look. It's a neurological disorder. So, yeah, that's my only, you know, downfall. One more thing, and we're about to get to the results and then how that went and how going there. Because I know this video is getting super long. I'm just trying to make this super duper informative. I did take Nayeli to get another speech evaluation last month. And they were like, yep, we feel like she does need speech. Once a week is fine for now. Possibly twice a week, depending on how she's doing. And she told me with 80% certainty, she said, I only saw her for 30 minutes. She said, but I feel like she's a gestalt language processor. I never heard of that, never knew what it was. As much um, research I've done on autism, I didn't know. She said this is very um, common in children that are that do have autism. However, there are children in this world that exist that don't have um, autism. Um, signs of like just thought learners, they like do a lot of repeating songs, repeating things they see on TV. And that's something all kids could do. But for example, um, I'll tell you guys like, something where I'm like oh yeah I definitely feel like Naya is a just a um, language processor she sings a lot more than she speaks like she does not say a full sentence like she's not like mommy I'm hungry like she'll say mommy hungry mommy food mommy eat eat but she'll sing an entire song like she can sing her ABCs and she'll sing the wheels on the bus go round and round but if you ask her what does the wheels on the bus do She'll say round and round, but she's not going to say the wheels on the bus goes round and round. So when I notice like, oh my goodness, finally somebody understands me because I'm like, she could sing, but she can't talk. She's like, that's common in just thought language processes. And it's a whole bunch of other stuff that's saved for another video. Let's get down to evaluation day and evaluation results. I know y'all have been waiting for this moment. I had to inform y'all on everything else first. Finally called me. They're like, hey, um, we're about to call you for a virtual appointment. When we call you for this virtual appointment, um, Nayeli does have to be present. We're going to ask you a whole lot of questions. They asked questions about my pregnancy, Nayeli's development. As they watched her play, I gave her some blocks and different toys. And through the computer screen, um, the center watched her. After that, they said, all right, ma'am. Well, this was right before the holidays. After the holidays, they were like, hey, because of the holidays, we're a little bit delayed. So it'll be kind of late in January when we get you in person. But that's when we're going to actually do a full autism evaluation and diagnosis. And I'm just letting you guys know how the process normally works um, because I have watched other videos. And this is kind of what happened with the other people as well. And it's getting, it's getting dark, so I got to hurry up. If y'all notice, I'm starting to talk really, really fast. I don't want to lose this outside natural light. And so, yeah. She was like, okay, Nayeli has very great skills we see some things that are concerning um so yeah we're gonna let's bring her in for evaluation so they booked her for a little bit over a month out like that was november right before her birthday so it was almost two months out which was today so what today looked like was a they told me bring a lot of snacks so i got a lot of snacks for nayeli she's gonna be here for a while we don't want her to be upset you know she's having a bad day rescheduled we need her full attention and for her to be at her best um in the morning because we want to see how she's truly acting and how she truly behaves and speech and all of that stuff put together so today we went in for three and a half hours um my appointment was at 9 30 we left at about 12 30 i would say the doctor came and got us she was actually working with a resident doctor so it was two doctors which i loved 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 because you know you could get two people's different opinions they were comparing with each other's thought like they just had so much focus on my daughter and so they brought us into this room and the room was like in the video i sent you guys that's what the room that we were in the entire time a lot of the things were um just playing they watched nayeli play the first part she was like most of the children don't like it because they 
they basically were was telling Nayeli what to do and they're like we can already see she's the type of child you don't she does not want you to tell her what to do and I was like glad y'all see they were very thorough they were very informative they asked me a lot of questions I asked them a lot of questions they had so much patience like it was just great my experience was a 10 out of 10 and I never had 10 out of 10 experiences the first part Nayeli wasn't too you know concerned with they were like giving her blocks and you know see she was like blocks and she'll um put them in a tower then push them down i'm just literally watching how she played um i did do a little assessment where it's like never sometimes likely i filled out a whole bunch of questions like that while she was doing that but that's it second part it was more so fun she pulled out even more toys that's um the clip that you saw in the video where Nayeli was playing with the baby dolls she got to do more so of what she wanted to and they just kind of observed like what she was doing and Nayeli was like baby sleepy night night Shh. she was like good job she has very good imaginary play she can answer yes or no questions she knows what she wants like she's she's very aware of what's going on with the world Nayeli did not cover her ears not one time during the appointment she did not cover her eyes she did not cover her face during one time of the appointment question her like what is this or Nayeli to see if she responded back to her name where's the door and Nayeli would be like door and she would point to the door um that's just generally what happened throughout the whole time i never been to jail but i'm just saying what i've seen in movies it's kind of like we were in an interrogation room where the uh, another doctor was watching from the mirror like it was a mirror they could see us but we couldn't see her but it was three cameras inside the um inside the room so another doctor was actually in there watching and another doctor was watching from you know like the room and the cameras so we had two we had four eyes on us at, um by professional doctors autism experts whatever the case may be she left out she said hey that was the clip where you guys see me and Nayeli go to the bathroom when she was out Nayeli told me she had to potty so we went to go to the bathroom and she came back she said hey mom how do you feel about today I said today was pretty good they kept asking me like is this normal of her how do you feel like she did like, hey yeah she did pretty good this is something that I noticed she doesn't do much at home but overall she did pretty good they came back to me and they told me Nayeli is on the autism spectrum disorder and I know y'all like you could have said that a whole hour ago if I would would not have explained some of the things you guys wouldn't understand what I'm saying now know if i should be telling this but they didn't tell me don't tell it so i'm gonna say it they didn't score her on a level but um they said because you know you may see online autism level one level two level three they said that's really for insurance purposes you know because we want the insurance to pay for these therapies that your child may need she said so we could put that a level two or level three if we want feel like they need extensive therapy but your child could not be that she said and their skills improve so we're not going to set them at a level three when and they could go to therapy then turn into a level one she said so we're just going to give her the diagnosis now Yelly is texting me y'all we're gonna give you the option or the the resources and tools and they gave me everything um if you want to put her into like a preschool or autism ready program or like um something like that but she said i don't feel like nayeli needs to go into an autism ready program because those kids are you know more severely on the spectrum and if she see them delay more delayed than her and behind it may delay her so if she's advancing where she's at keep her where she's at and i agree with them because Nayeli's the type she's gonna copy her peers because Nayeli does not drink milk at home she came home her first week of school just try to give you guys an example of what I mean because I'm kind of using it may be kind of confusing what I'm saying she came home from school and she's like mommy tummy hurt so I'm like tummy hurt what happened mommy boo boo hurt so I'm like yeah boo boo hurt what did somebody touch her and touch you inappropriately and I'm like okay she kept was she was trying to tell me that she was constipated but my child cannot talk fully so I was trying to figure out what's going on I go to read her school reports and they're like oh she's been drinking milk and I'm like she can't have milk she does not drink milk at home and I didn't think I had to tell them that because she if you get a cup of milk on her face she's gonna say mm -mm. But she saw the other kids doing it, so she's going to do it. So she's not fit to be put in an autism readiness program. She said, it's on you. You know you're the expert in your daughter. But she said that would delay her. If she's progressing, let her keep progressing. And I agree. Because my daughter, I'm telling you, like, like for example, if she's around babies, she's going to start acting like a baby. Knowing doggone well, she don't act like that. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, if she's progressing, we're going to keep her here. And they told me they want to put her in speech therapy, which I already knew that was like a given. Everything that they told me, I already knew. And they were like, mom, 
you need to come up here and work with us you know everything like what do you mean like how did this stuff they're like what did you expect us to be looking for i'm like um eye contact because she responded back to her name and she's lighting up toys how she's playing how she's interacting does she interact with other people how is she playing with the toys like they're like golly i didn't even have to explain nothing to you because i tell y'all i stressed like just i knew something was not right like i just knew something was going on with my daughter bro like i'm like i'm not crazy bro like so i knew so they were like mom you know everything like are you the expert at this point so like they didn't have to tell me much like i was like okay it's a few questions i did have like this and that but overall i pretty much knew everything um the, and they also recommended her go to aba therapy i don't know much about aba therapy so i'm not gonna sit here and act like i do know everything um regarding aba therapy but they said overall this is just going to help with everything her communicating with others her being familiar um getting more familiar around other people her way of thinking because nayeli has such a manipulative 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 mindset it's gonna help that um that way of kind of her way or no way it's gonna help i don't know what they got to do to my baby but she needed y'all she had got a previous behavioral therapy referral so that's what i was expecting i'm like yeah they about to go ahead and lay a behavioral referral I said, mm -mm, mm -mm, she don't need that like, she's not destructive a lot another thing uh, that's common with children and autism they're destructive to their self they may bang their head and hit other people hit other kids she's not destructive like that in no way so she did not get referred to um behavioral therapy but that's pretty much it if anything i feel more relieved that okay i finally got an answer it's been this long um if you're a mom that's watching this and you have any questions um you could comment them down below if you don't feel comfortable commenting them down below you can dm me on my instagram you need any advice anything like that i'm just here to help and of course be an advocate for autism and when i say that i don't want anybody to take this by disrespect and if you did i you totally taking it the wrong way because i mean it by no disrespect i'm gonna talk about this journey y'all gonna hear more videos about it but you're not gonna see my page being filled with autism this autism this or or day in the life with my autistic child morning routine with my autistic child night routine with my autistic child and that's nothing wrong with that if you do because you're, you're being an advocate definitely advocate for your child i just feel my in my personal opinion I don't want a diagnosis to define my child. I'm not saying I'm against it because she's gonna know. It's not like I'm hiding it. It's on my social media. I'm informing you guys about it. You guys won't just see me letting that define who she is. Yes, you may have this disorder or you may be on the spectrum. However, you're capable of doing X, Y, and Z. You're capable of doing this, this, and that. This doesn't stop you from doing this, this, and that. And also, it's not going to enable her. Nothing about the way I treat my daughter is going to change. Nothing the way, nothing in the way I discipline my daughter is going to change. She listens. She comprehends. She knows how what behaviors are expected out of her. So nothing about this is going to change besides the fact of getting her the professional help that she needs. She is very smart. She is very beautiful. She is my everything. Like, that's my girl. Nothing would make me hate her. Nothing would make me not like her. I see so many parents that get on there and they're crying like, oh, I just found out my child. It's like, baby, that's my baby. I don't care what the case was. Thank y'all so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned with us on this journey and for all of our other comment, uh, other content. Follow me on my TikTok and my Instagram. Everything is Deja Tamiya. And bye, y'all.